Hello and welcome, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, it's for newbies. I'm going to be running through how you can set up OBS Studio. It's a really straightforward video, but it's going to cover quite a lot of different things in the video. If you're completely new to streaming and you want to use OBS Studio, you're going to find this video everything that you need. You may want to watch from start to finish. If you're quite new to streaming, but actually you're just switching over, say from Streamlabs OBS or something else, you probably will find this video quite useful because it'll cover some stuff that you more than likely will not know about OBS Studio. So this video is going to be a complete OBS Studio setup guide. We're going to be running through the installation of OBS Studio, how to connect your Twitch account, your YouTube gaming account. We're going to be running through some settings within OBS Studio, including the canvas settings and the bitrate settings for streaming. We're going to go through what scenes and sources are. We're going to go through what docs are and how to use docs. And then to round off the video, we're just going to set up a very basic streaming rig so that you can see exactly how it works with all the essential things on there, including alerts, a couple of widget browser sources that are available just to give you a flavor of what can be done with OBS Studio. And of course, the displays and the webcam and all that sort of stuff will be set up in OBS Studio as well. So yeah, we're covering quite a lot. I'm going to try and squeeze it in a short space as possible. If you do find it useful, if you're brand new to streaming, hit the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let's go. Okay, first up, we've got installation of OBS Studio. You're going to want to browse to obsproject.com. There's an option here straight away to download for Windows, Mac, or Linux. I do actually have OBS Studio already installed, but I'll just show you the brief process here. We click on it immediately. This will ask to start a download. We want to keep this file, and this will go into your downloads folder. You can click here and show in folder. Once you've downloaded it, you'll see the installer in your downloads folder. You just double click on that and go through the normal process that you would go through to install any program on Windows. Now, once you've installed OBS Studio, Studio onto your PC, you're basically greeted with a completely blank OBS. The very first thing I'm going to do is actually connect this to the Twitch account or YouTube gaming account that you're using. And to do this, we need to click into the settings in the bottom hand corner here. We need to click on the streaming icon and we want to connect account. Now, you don't have to do this. You can use stream keys, for example, if you're streaming to someone else's platform as a one off. But if you're streaming from OBS Studio all the time, say to Twitch or to YouTube gaming or something like that, it's best to just connect your account. So I'm going to click connect here and all we need to do is just type our name and password and then we'll have to authorize OBS Studio as well. So now that this is connected, you'll see that this is already connected here and there's a server that's auto selected. So you basically you can choose to select a specific server if you want, but normally it's best to just choose auto as recommended here. If you're using a VPN here, it might just cause some complications. So you may want to select a specific server for you. I've already done a much more detailed video on the best settings for Streamlabs OBS, which was very much applicable to OBS Studio. So I'm basically just going to link that video up there so you can look into that in a little bit more more detail but there are some key settings that I'm just going to go through right now just to make sure that you're on the right line so you don't have to jump away but if you find you're getting jumpy streams and that sort of stuff or performance issues check out that video now the bitrate you can actually have up to 7800 or, or 8000 for Twitch I believe it's 10 or 12000 bitrate for YouTube gaming although they state that you're allowed up to 6000 kilobits per second on Twitch I've set mine to 7800 I know that works pretty well for me but you'd be safe setting this to 6000 for kilobits per second and this is your upload speed from OBS Studio your computer your PC all the way to Twitch and you just need to bear in mind about kilobits per second the upload speed of your internet needs to be able to manage this so for example if you've got an upload speed maximum in your whole household of 6,000 kilobits per second you don't want to be allocating 100% of that to here because that means nobody else in your household will be able to use the internet or at very least you're going to get a choppy stream so you probably want to allocate maybe half or two thirds of your maximum upload capacity to here. So if you've got not great internet, this is going to be a problem for you potentially. Next up, the encoder. If you've got an NVENC graphics card and you can do a search for this on Google just to check whether or not you've got an NVENC graphics card, you want to select the NVENC new. If you don't have an NVENC graphics card, the X264 will be just fine for you. Now here you've got the option to rescale the output if you want. Now I think by default, OBS Studio will default the rescaling output on the streaming tab here to 1920 by 1080. But if you want want to output this to a smaller size, say for example, if your upload speed isn't that great, you can rescale this output. Now there are some default options here that you can select, but I think you can also just customize this by typing in the resolution that you want. So say for example, if you wanted a 1440p output, you could just select the 1440p and you would hit apply on that. Next, we'll actually get into the video settings of OBS Studio here. The base or canvas resolution is the actual size of your screen. So if you're running a 4K monitor like I am, you want to match whatever that is. If you're running a 1920 by 
1080 monitor, you want to match the base canvas resolution of your monitor here as well. Now, the output scaled resolution just means that you're able to scale down the size of your monitor for the purposes of performance of your stream, OBS, however good or bad your PC might be, and also your internet speed. So it just means if you don't have a really good internet and you don't have a really good PC, you can scale down some of that so that your stream performs better. As a general rule of thumb, a much more scaled down stream that is smooth is going to be a better viewing experience than something that's fully scaled up but is a little bit more choppy. So you just need to test this with your friends and try running a couple of test streams to start with. So for me, I actually downscale a 4K monitor to 1920 by 1080. That's an exact divisible amount of by two. And I believe that that actually helps when it's an exact divisible by two number. You can also set the FPS here. Most people go with either a 30 FPS or a 60 FPS. Again, it depends on the performance of your PC and also the upload speed. If you've got a really good upload speed, you're obviously going to be able to sustain uploading twice the amount of frames to the internet. However, your PC also has to be able to handle that as well. Once you're happy with the settings, just click OK on that and we've basically got a blank stream here. Next, I'm going to go into the audio settings. I tend to like to go for a 48 kilohertz sample rate and I tend to go for stereo, but there's all kinds of different options you've got here as well. The key thing to note about the actual sources for your audio here, this is where all of the sources are pulled in from essentially your Windows settings. So these options here are detected from your Windows settings. Now, if you want, you can just leave these as the default options and it will already pick up what your headset is, what your bass microphone is and all that sort of stuff from your Windows settings. And you can check this by right clicking on the speaker icon in the right hand corner and going into sound settings. And you can see here, you can choose your output device. So this will be your default output device and this will be your default input device, essentially your microphone. So essentially desktop audio is going to be whatever it is that you want your audience to hear. Now there are a million different ways that you can do this. So I'm just going to keep it the most simplest method, but do some more research if you've got a more complicated audio setup. You want to set your desktop audio typically to your headset. So for example, for me, that will be my Corsair headset. And that means everything that I hear, the stream will also hear because it will come through then. Don't worry, you can adjust the volume of this once we're in OBS Studio as well. The mic or auxiliary audio, we want to just select whatever the microphone is. Now you may already have a microphone. It might be the one that's on the headset, in which case select the headset microphone, or you might have an external device. For example, like a HyperX Quadcast or a Fine Fine microphone or something like that. You just need to select that microphone here and it should come through. Now what that will do is add all of your audio devices to this audio mixer that appears here by default. Now you can choose to adjust the volume of these against each other by literally sliding up and down these sliders and you can see here when I pulled this down the audio level went quite considerably lower. Now if I leave this at max I'm actually seeing it's just slightly peeking into the yellow zone and it's slightly dipping into the green zone and that's about perfect. If it's going into the red zone the chances are it's going to be hurting the ears of your viewers and if it's really far down here chances are your viewers are not going to be able to hear you very well. Now this goes for both your microphone and also your desktop audio and as a general rule of thumb you want your desktop audio to be about 20 to 30 percent lower than your microphone. So that means your microphone, your voice and your commentary takes priority over your desktop audio and your gameplay. You do not want your viewers to be not be able to hear what you're saying. So when you connect up your Twitch or your YouTube chat account, OBS Studio will detect this and it will automatically try and apply some docs to your stream. Now we'll just briefly cover exactly what docs are. It's automatically pulled in my stream information here for Twitch and also my chat from Twitch as well. I'm just going to accept the cookies on these so we've got the full view of this. Now with the stream information, you can choose to keep this if you want. This is where you can set the title, the go live notifications and the tags and all of that sort of stuff. And you can also, of course, add your chat in here as well. But these also exist on Stream Manager, which is a Twitch web-based application that you can go on and essentially you're getting the exact same information. So if you're already having this information elsewhere, you may not want to have it here and instead just have the full screen preview of your stream. Now you can grab these docs in the corner here and choose to place them wherever you want. For example, I've just docked this to the left hand side and I've docked my chat to the right hand side and we can now also resize these as well. So if you just go on view and docks, you'll see here that there's loads of different docks available. Now, if you don't see all of these docks, it's because you've probably not already connected your YouTube 
gaming account or your Twitch account or whatever it is that you're going to be streaming because this will only show the docs that are available to you currently. And the same goes for any plugins that you apply to OBS Studio. You will not see the docs here until you've installed that plugin and it essentially becomes available as a doc. And obviously that makes pretty good sense for an open source software like OBS Studio. So now I'm just going to briefly run through what are scenes and sources. So essentially what a scene is, is a collection of sources and we'll get into sources in a second, but a scene will be a collection of different sources that you've manually added into your stream to essentially create some sort of scene that you can then stream from. For example, it may be a be right back screen. That would be a scene that shows some animations perhaps or something like that, that essentially are telling the users that you are not there at the moment and that you will be right back. And you're essentially adding different sources to that to create a really nice looking functional way of streaming to your viewers. The types of scenes that you'd normally get are things like an intermission screen where you can chat to people. You can also have, of course, the main gameplay scene displaying mainly the gameplay and perhaps you've got a webcam in the corner. Then a lot of people choose to have like an ending scene, a starting scene and a be right back scene. But the beauty about scenes is you can literally customize them as much or as little as you want to. And people tend to get really creative with the types of scenes that they create. Conversely, sources are actually the different elements that you would put into a scene. For example, the webcam or the display capture or the monitor capture or an application capture. It might be some audio visualizer. It could be a widget that's doing like a goal, alerts and labels. These are all different sources. So basically sources of data that you're pulling into a scene to build a scene. Now in terms of the types of sources that you've got available to put into a scene, I could just click the plus icon here. Now I actually have two or three plugins installed. So I've got more different types of sources available to me through OBS Studio plugins. But most of these are available through the base version of OBS Studio. For example, an audio input capture. So if you don't want your default audio to be on a certain scene, you can add a specific audio capture for a specific scene. Browser sources are used widely by all kinds of different third parties to pull in animations and interactivity into streams. You've got images, other media sources like movie files and MP4s and stuff. You can even bring in a scene as a source. So if you've got a whole nother scene somewhere else, you can bring that in as a source and display it on your new scene. You can bring in text files, video capture devices like a webcam and all that kind of stuff. And the way that you create a new source or a new scene is you simply just click on the plus icon here and then select what source you want to add. Or if we're adding a new scene, we want to click on the plus icon here, give the scene a name, for example, gameplay, click OK on that. And we've got another scene available and we can build the assets up in this scene. So what we're going to actually do here is just create some basic scenes and sources just to get you started and to give you a flavor of what can be achieved in OBS Studio. So now that I've got my gameplay scene that I've already set up here, I'm going to add a display capture here. So I'm going to click the plus icon. I want to add a display capture and I'm going to call this my 4K ASUS. Click OK on this. Now straight away, it's detected my 4K monitor. But if it didn't do that, we've got an option here because we've got it set to automatic. There's different options to select, but we can select a different display that it wants to capture. For example, if I wanted it to capture a different screen of mine, I can do that. I'm happy that this is capturing the correct scene here and we can choose whether or not we want it to capture the cursor as well. So I'll click OK on that. We now have a display capture. I'm just going to turn this off for the time being because we don't want to see loads of versions of that. Now I'm going to add a webcam. So we're going to click the plus icon again and go into video capture device. This time I'm going to call this the C920 because I've got a spare C920 Logitech kicking around. So I'm going to click OK on this and we can select the C920 that's on here or any other camera devices that you have available to you and plugged in into Windows. So I'll leave it on this here, but now we can configure this webcam if we want to. For example, we can change resolution and the FPS. So I might want to have this as a 1920 by 1080 resolution and it makes it 1920, 1080. You can change the color spacing and all sorts of other different settings here for that. I'll just click OK on that. Now, if I right click on this, we've got other settings that we can do to manage and arrange these different sources. And the common one that's used is transform. And you're essentially transforming the shape or the size or the positioning of these sources on your scenes. So if I click on transform for this and I want to, for example, I want to flip it 180, I can do that. Obviously, this isn't very functional, but you can do some pretty playful stuff with scenes and sources. Now, at any point, if you make a mistake, you can control Z on your keyboard and it'll just undo what you've done. So I'm just going to resize this for now as a webcam and I'm going to position it wherever I want by clicking and dragging. Let's say, for example, I want to position it there. Now, bear in mind, if we now click this eyeball icon, we've also got the display capture as well. We've essentially got here the most basic form of a stream available with a webcam and a display capture. Now, some nuances here. I'm actually 
also going to add a game capture. Now, the difference between a game capture and a display capture. A display capture will capture everything on that specific screen, no matter what you've got on there. Any browser, any mouse activity, everything. Whereas a game capture will only specifically capture something that you choose it to capture, like a specific application or more commonly a game. So if I just call this game capture, leave it as the default, click OK on that. Now we could choose to capture any full screen application or you can capture a specific window and I can select the window that I want it to capture. Now, in most cases, having capture any full screen application will work for you. But if you find you're having trouble with this, just switch to capture a specific application and select the window that you want to capture. Now, the reason why this is important is because if OBS Studio is only capturing the display from a specific application versus everything else that you might have somewhere on your screen, it actually increases the performance of OBS Studio because it's only capturing one application and trying to render and display one application. Now, what I see a lot of people do is actually having both of them on screen, which is absolutely fine. You just want to make sure that you haven't got both of them visible at the same time. So I don't want to have both of them visible here at the same time if I'm not running a game capture. So when I'm not running a game, I'm going to turn this off and run just the display capture and capture what I'm showing. For example, a YouTube video or something else whilst I'm streaming. Whereas if I get into a game, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to turn on the game capture and make sure it's only capturing that game for the best performance of OBS Studio. So now that we've got our stream set up, we've got all the settings right. We've got the audio in there. We've done some base and canvas resolution stuff, some bitrate stuff. We've added some sources to some scenes and things like that. We're now really just trying to do the nice things to make the stream look and feel as best as possible. Now, there are hundreds of videos out there. And if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be accessing those. So make sure you do subscribe. It's an ongoing process. So don't feel like you need to get your stream absolutely perfect from day one. You will learn a lot over the course of many years. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go into some of the main things that people tend to add. We're going to cover alerts here, overlays. So the things that make your stream look and feel a little bit better, stream labels, and we'll also cover some widgets and goals as well. Now, there are loads of different companies that provide stream overlays for your stream, and they're quite easy to install. But I'm actually in Streamlabs' library here. You can visit Nerd or Die, Owned.tv, Visuals by Impulse. There's loads of different companies that provide stream overlays. You just have to scout around on Google. Now, there are a few different ways that you can install the overlays. One way that you can do this is by actually installing the overlay to Streamlabs OBS and then importing it into OBS Studio. I actually have another video about this, so I'll link this up here. It's just a quick and easy way to install overlays and it'll do all of the work for you. Now, this is particularly good if you're using something like Streamlabs because essentially it will just import everything and do the work for you. However, if you're not using Streamlabs and it's something like Nerd or Die or whatever, follow the specific instructions that the platform that you're buying from give you. Now, sort of annoyingly, Streamlabs doesn't have a way that you can just download these themes and then install them directly to OBS by selecting the different elements and uploading them. But to be honest, that's actually quite a longer process process anyway. So actually, sometimes it's better to just install it into Streamlabs and import it over. Now, this particular overlay that I've selected is a Streamlabs Prime overlay. I happen to have a Streamlabs Prime overlay that's running out in about six months time. If you do want to have Streamlabs Prime, use my link below. The affiliate link will get you money off Streamlabs Prime. You literally get it a lot cheaper if you use that link. And all you have to do is click the link. So I'm going to follow the instructions in the video that I linked to install this into OBS Studio. So it's taken me a couple of minutes, but one of the main benefits of installing something into something like like Streamlabs OBS and then moving it over to OBS Studio is it will place everything, all of the known sources, like the default sources in its right position. So I've not even had to adjust this camera here and it's also imported alert box for stream alerts, like the labels and that sort of stuff. But we will be covering these, so don't worry too much. Or you can simply just manually create some of these things and find the files and I'll show you exactly how you do that. All this scene is made up of at the moment is the alert box, which is a browser source and I'll go into detail about that in a second, but it essentially will give alerts every single time somebody follows or gives bits or subscribes to the channel, that sort of stuff. Then we've got this WebM file. Now, WebM is just a media file and it is literally just this animation here around the webcam border. And if we right click on this and look at the properties, we can see it's pointing to this file here. Now, this is just a media file that is in the shape of a webcam that we've literally added. But because we've imported from Streamlabs OBS, we've not had to actually manually add this. So I've 
just show you how you would manually add a webcam border if you were to do that. So you click on the plus icon here, you'd go onto a media source, you would call it webcam border, click OK on that, and then we're just going to browse to wherever that file is located. Now you just want to make sure that you're clicking the loop icon because that means that the webcam will loop the media file. If you don't do that, it will play the full animation and then it will basically turn off the animation or freeze the animation if that makes sense. So you want to make sure that for something like that, you want it looped and we just click OK on that and that will add whatever that media file is. Next up, we're going to cover stream labels. Now these are a little bit like notifications, but instead of notifying when people follow with like an animation, it simply just shows a text version of their name on your stream. And there's different things you can do with this to make it a lot more creative. Now I again use the Streamlabs engine for this, but there's different label engines that you can look into and use. So I've got a third party program here that I've downloaded. It's a small Windows application called Streamlabs Stream Labels. And we're basically able, once we've installed this, to change the output directory. Now all this engine does is it uses Streamlabs API and it essentially just dumps text data into these files. And these are all the different text data that you can then place onto your OBS stream. The most common ones that you're probably going to see is the most recent donator, the most recent follower, the most recent cheerer, and the most recent subscriber. But there's loads of different options that you can choose from here. Now, if I just look in this file, for example, the most recent subscriber, double click on this, and there's a text version of my most recent subscriber. So once you've got this working and installed, click on these text files, or you can add a new text file by clicking the plus icon and clicking on text GDI. We're just going to call this latest follower. Click OK. Now we're just going to check read from file here, and we're going to browse to that same file. So I just want to select the most recent follower here. Click open on that. And we can now see this person is the most recent follower that I've got. We can now change all the fonts. We can change the sizing, the colors, the opacity, the alignment, all sorts of stuff. And we can even resize it here. I'll just leave this basic for now. But we want to resize it down like this. Now this one here is actually a static text file. It's not reading from file dynamically. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to replace it with the one that is dynamic. So that's now set as dynamic now. And I do that for all of the other labels as well. And I've now got labels and the webcam on stream. Next up, I'm going to go into alerts. So these are events that happen on your stream. It will display an animation, potentially a sound effect as well. And you can resize that and get as creative as you'd like to be with that. Again, I'm using Streamlabs here, but you can also look at stream elements and there's loads of different notification providers out there. Now this widget URL is essentially a browser source. So I could literally paste that URL here and it would show on a browser exactly what the content is. But obviously the content only appears when there's a notification that comes through. In other words, when someone follows or when someone gives bits or donates or whatever. But what we can do here is use the test follows. So what I'm just going to do is copy this URL. I'm going to leave everything as default now, but just to say, I do have a much more detailed video about alert box. So check out the link above for that particular video. But essentially you can customize absolutely everything about this, the fonts, the size, the timing of it all, the volume, the animation, everything. But what we need to do is copy this widget URL. There's a button here just under my camera called copy URL. You can't see it, but I'll click that button and it's copied the widget URL to my clipboard. Now we go into OBS Studio. Now we're going to click the plus icon. I'm going to click browser to add a browser source. I'm going to call this alerts and click OK on that. Now it will just place a normal placeholder here, which is just an OBS image. We need to paste that browser URL here and click OK and it will display those alerts. Now we can resize this and position it wherever we want. For example, right click, transform and we'll center this horizontally. It will put it perfectly in the middle of the screen. Actually, maybe we want it a little bit bigger and just do the same again. Now what I can do is go back into the alert box here and do a test follow. So I'll click this test follow button here and we'll see this is the theme that I happen to have on mine at the moment, but you can customize all of these different things. It's literally the second day after Halloween and I've not changed these alerts yet, so don't judge me, okay? I'm now going to look at just another widget, for example, a follower alert. And again, I've got a video in more detail on exactly how you can do this, but we're essentially going to be going into Streamlabs again for this, going into the follower goal, and we're going to copy this widget URL once again, once we've edited all this information and created our goal. Again, the video that I've got on this gives a lot more detail exactly on how to do this. So again, we're going to go into open Studio, we'll click plus and go on browser source. We're going to call this one follower goal. Click OK on this. I'm going to paste the new URL here for the goal. Click OK. 
and the goal will now appear. Now I'm just going to resize this and put it somewhere a little bit more logical. And there you go. Now we've got a stream goal and this will update every single time that someone follows or whatever it is that I've set my goal to do. The final thing to do really is just to show you the different scenes that are actually available that you can use here. Obviously, I'm just here in like a game capture screen. So if I turn on the display capture here, it will show whatever it is that I'm doing at that moment in time. But if we go into the starting soon, we can see all kinds of different scenes that we've got here from those overlays that we downloaded. And again, these are really, really simple. We've got alert box that's added on here as well. It's just an animated MP4 using the plus icon, adding a media source and browsing to that file. But again here, if I wanted to, I could add some labels here that add my Instagram or my Facebook page or something else. Here's the ending scene. Here's the be right back scene. And we've got the intermission scene as well. So we can put our camera in here. I'm just going to add a video capture device. I'm going to add the existing video capture. Click OK here. Now, obviously, it's put this in the wrong place. But another thing to bear in mind, the sources will display in the order that they're displayed in. So the video capture device is at the top of the sources list, meaning this will override everything else that's underneath it. But if I drag this to the bottom, you'll see all of a sudden it will put it to the bottom and these other files will be above it and they will display above it. So we need this to be at the bottom level here because this is a PNG file that's essentially got transparency in this area here and we'll just drag this out and that looks nice and clean there. And if we wanted to, we could add a browser source for a chat panel here and the display capture here for the gameplay that we're using. Okay, so that was the full and comprehensive guide on how you can set up OBS Studio for complete beginners. Hopefully you found that really useful, at least parts of it really, really useful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button because it really helps me out. I really appreciate it. And yeah, take care. Have a good day.